لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الخلق محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته from all of us here at IANT to all of you and your loved ones and your families رمضان مبارك كريم we are so grateful to Allah رب العالمين that we are just a few days away from Ramadan and we know that this is a month that all of us are looking forward to especially considering that last year Corona shut things down <clears throat> and our normal spiritual recharge was certainly affected in many different ways Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen this year will be a bit different Ramadan, that blessed month that the Prophet ﷺ himself said قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ شَهْرٌ مبارك, That this is a blessed month that has come and it is a month that is so special as he teaches us sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying إِذَا كَانَتْ أَوَّلُ لَيْلَةٍ مِنْ شَهْرِ رَمَضَانِ صُفِدَتِ الشَّيَاطِينُ وَمَرَّدَتُ الْجِنِّ Tells us that from the very first night of Ramadan and for us, we know that inshallah ta'ala, that will be this Monday, this Monday night, the 12th of April, from Maghrib time as the night begins, and it starts off for us today, that from Monday night at Maghrib time, the Prophet والسلام, is telling us that Allah Rabbul Alameen, from that first night on through for the remainder of the month, that He is going to chain up and he is going to basically lock away the demons as well as the rebellious sinful jinn that are present. And he told us Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam وَتُغْلَقُ أَبْوَابُ النَّارُ وَلَا يُفْتَحُ مِنْهَا بَاب And that the gates to hell are all shut, closed and not a gate from them, not an entrance from them is left open. وَتُفْتَحُ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ وَلَا يُغْلَقُ مِنْهَا بَابِ And that the gates to paradise are all opened and not one entrance is left closed. He then said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, وَيُنَادِي مُنَادٍ And that a caller will call out, a caller from among the angels. And he says, this angel, yeah, uh, he says, for those who are seeking goodness, step forth, come forward. This is your time. And for those who are other than that, he's warning them, telling them, halt, stop. This is the month of Ramadan, change. And then he concluded, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, telling us that, وَلِلَّهِ عُتَقَاءُ مِنَ النَّارِ وَذَلِكَ فِي كُلِّ لَيْلَةِ Concluding it for us to help us understand what salvation is. That every single night of the 29 or 30 nights of Ramadan, the entire month, every single night, that Allah the Most Merciful, that He will save those from His worshippers who during Ramadan, it's night and it's day, are sincerely, devoutly, living their lives, seeking to please their loving creator, their cherisher subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is our chance and our opportunity to show Allah Rabbul Alameen how much we love him and how much he means to us and how we prefer the life of the hereafter, which is for eternity over whatever there may be in this world. So Ahbabullah, IANT is especially thrilled to be open this Ramadan for us to come and to worship Allah Rabbul Alameen. But let's inshallah ta'ala prepare ourselves for the masjid from the time that we're still at home. Let's get ourselves at the right frame of mind from home as well as our bodies as a whole. So we want to make sure that we understand that 
the masjid is going to have limitations that the bathrooms and the wudu station even though that they're open that every other stall is going to be available and for the wudu every other seat is going to be made available therefore if you know that you have irritable bowel if you have gas if you have whatever the case is take it easy on yourself when you break your fast and when you have your meal so that when you come to the masjid inshallah there's not going to be a line waiting to use the bathroom a line waiting to make wudu and that it's going to be something that's going to detract and take away from your ability to come to worship so know yourself know what your body is like and plan appropriately make use the bathroom at home make wudu at home put on whatever there is of a, of a, of a soft pleasant cologne or oil dress comfortably but appropriately so that you can come and that you can worship for the duration of time that we're going to be here of about an hour or so because the masahif in the masjid are still off limits we are encouraged encouraging those of you who choose to bring your own mushaf from home so that if you choose to read and follow along in the salah that you can do so Others of you that are a bit more technical and don't want to use the mushaf and you want to use your phone, no problem, bring your phone. However, brothers and sisters, I am reminding us all, please make sure that if you're going to bring your phone, that it is not going to in the least distract us, take us away from the worship of Allah Rabbul Alameen. Remember you are coming here to worship as all of us are. Do not incur upon yourself the sin of disturbing our worship of Allah Rabbul Alameen because the cell phones. If you don't know how to effectively make sure that it is in a do not disturb mode, it is on airplane mode, practice at home, you still have a few nights. Otherwise, if you don't think you can do so, the safer thing is don't bring it, it'll be better inshallah. The other thing is Ahbab, we will not have any babysitting. So there's no babysitting services. We are certainly welcoming you along with your family, but children need to be 10 years and older. So, so long as your kids are 10 years and older, by the way, no one's gonna ask for their ID at the door to check to say, prove that they're 10 years old. That's a trust we're leaving between you and Allah Azza wa Jal. But the hope is that at 10 years old, your children are mature enough to know what it means to come to the masjid, to come pray next to you, to stand next to you, to worship with you, and to not be playing hide and seek or anything else of that sort. So after you have prepared yourself and your family as a whole, we want you to understand that naturally our parking space is limited. So if you, if you live within walking distance, please walk to the masjid. Walk with your family, walk by yourself, however it is that you're coming, if you can walk and you're in walking distance, do so and leave those parking spaces for others who are coming from miles away. If you are going to be driving because you live at a distance, we ask you to please, number one, carpool if you're coming with family so that we don't have, you know, two, three cars coming from the same household. Space is very limited. We do not want to in any way... Uh, offend the neighbors, we don't want to block their driveways, we don't want to cause any issues of that sort, nor do we want to have any issues with regards to the police such that cars are going to get towed. But leave early. We want you to leave early too, so that this way you're not driving like a madman to get here on time. Leave early. If the salah is going to be 10 minutes after the adhan, isha prayer we're talking about, that Isha prayer is going to be 10 minutes after the Adhan. So say we're going to be starting at 9.10. We want you to make sure that you're leaving your house at least, at least 15 to 20 minutes before the actual time. So that this way you'll have tranquility, you'll have your calmness as you're driving. Then to know that the main entrance from Centennial, it is going to be closed the entire month of Ramadan. No one will be coming in through Centennial, so you'll have to come in through Abrams, and you'll have to come in through Spring Valley. There's going to be Ahbab, 
volunteers that will be clearly distinguishable through their dress and uh, different you, you know, uh, instruments that they're going to have. Please follow their directions as they're going to be guiding you, telling you to move into this area, to keep going, to park, stop, whatever it is. This is for everybody's safety and wellness. We don't want that you're thinking, I'm going to not listen to them and cut between cars and lanes, and we have issues happening. Please make sure that you listen to them, park wherever it is that they guide you to, and then walk calmly into the masjid. As the Prophet ﷺ said, وَعَلَيْكُمْ السَّكِينَةُ وَالْوَقَارِ That you're coming to worship Allah Rabbul Alameen and you're in a state of tranquility, you're in a state of calm, a state of self-respect, so that our minds are not racing because we're still rushing and we're hastening. No, rather our minds are calm, our bodies are calm. Please make sure that you have with you, everybody, your face mask, your prayer rug, a shoe bag, because you will take your shoes with you inside the bag, place them right next to you, where you're going to pray. And if you would like to have a water bottle with you, so that you can rehydrate throughout the prayer times, feel free to do so. As you come into the door, Ahbab, there's going to be, of course, other ushers that are here. There's going to be security. They're gonna check your temperature, follow whatever the directions are, line up nicely, and work inshallah ta'ala together so that this way the process will be expedited and you will be able to inshallah ta'ala enter in and move in for the next stage which is the salah. Once you're inside the building, Ahibbati, understand that we're going to extremes to make sure that the facility as a whole is clean, and that it's safe. So after each of the prayer services, the entire facility of where salah is taking place, the bathrooms, the wudu station, for the brothers and the sisters, it is cleaned and it is sanitized. Also, understand that we're going to have security on the premise throughout the whole entire time to make sure that everybody is safe. We're going to have our armed guards as well as volunteers who will be here for both on the brothers and on the sisters' side. Please don't give anybody a hard time. Work with them. They are here for our safety and our well-being. Understand that no food is allowed in the building, so do not bring anything of food. Not for yourself or for anybody else. The sisters, when they walk in, they have their sister section, the downstairs and the upstairs, as is usual for their prayer spots. The brothers, however, were asking them, as ushers will tell them, to go into the gym. The format is the same as our Jumu'ah. We will begin in the gym, and then after the gym is filled in, everything else leading on through into the carpeted prayer areas of the masjid. There are tape spots that are going to be, that are already here, placed, so that everybody knows exactly where to stand. We're asking you to make sure that you please stand in one of those spots. Place your carpet down there, and inshallah ta'ala know that that's what you're going, where you're going to pray. If you're coming with your children, so a father is going to have his son, a mother is going to have her daughter, center yourselves on the line. So that this way, inshallah ta'ala, if the line is like this, both of you are exactly from the center to the left and to the right. How you choose to use the carpet, whether you have your own or you, you align it in a different way so that just your foreheads, it's up to you. But the point being, so that both of you are able to pray next to each other, that is perfectly fine because we know that you're coming from the same house. Otherwise, everyone else is going to pray on their own spot. We want to make sure that even though we have everything of sanitation and, and cleanliness and the uh, climate control to make sure that everything is going to be as comfortable as nice, we still want to make sure based on the advice that we're given from our health committee that we want to keep time short. We're hoping that within an hour we can finish up everything of Isha, including the Tarawih and Witr. So because of that, once we pray our Isha, we'll pray those two rakahs of Sunnah, and then we're going to have only eight rakahs of Taraweeh. 
In those eight rakahs of taraweeh, we will be reciting half ages of Quran. Then we will have the witr, and we are done. We are hoping that inshallah, Rabbul Alameen, all of that can be done within an hour's time, because I know that it's going to be unprecedented for most of us to be wearing our masks for an hour, while at the same time being focused and enjoying the worship of Allah Rabbul Alameen. So we ask you, Ya Ahbab, to please work with us, to be patient, and inshallah, Rabbul Alameen, this Ramadan will be that Ramadan that we've that we so direly need. A Ramadan that is going to nurture for us our faith. A Ramadan that is going to bring us closer to our cherisher. A Ramadan where our sins will be forgiven. A Ramadan where we will be from those who Allah Rabbul Alameen saves. Let's work together. Let's make the most of this. And we ask Him Jalla wa'ala that He bless us. IANT, our community, our families, the Muslims throughout the world, that He bless us as a whole so that in this month of Ramadan we will be from those who He loves, that He is well pleased with, such that He will save us from the trials and suffering of this life, as well as anything from that point onwards, and that He will bless us to enter Al Firdaus Al A'la, Min Ghaidi Hisabin, wa Min Ghaidi Adab, Allahumma Ameen. Looking forward to seeing you here at IANT. Please keep us in your prayers. Jazakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.